the true victims are our fellow animals, not humans. If anyone's having beliefs forced on them, it's our fellow animals. And the whole claim that veganism is being forced down our throats, our fellow animals' bodies are literally being forced down non-vegans' throats. Hello and welcome to part two of my response video to Jubilee's Is Eating Animals Wrong? Hunters vs. Vegans. Now if you haven't already seen part one, I encourage you to go back and watch my reaction video so you can see the entire video in the original context. Because there's going to be a lot to go through in this video, so this is going to be an action-packed point-by-point -point analysis. Also, I just want to say if you're not vegan or an animal advocate, I think you'll still find this conversation useful if you're interested in these issues. Now, if you want to make this a bit more interactive, when the original Jubilee clip is playing, have a think, maybe even pause the video for a moment, and think about what you noticed in the clip. Was there anything you thought was particularly good, or perhaps something that could have been improved upon? Or perhaps any questions you might ask in response to what they said? Then you can listen to my thoughts on the clip and see if we thought of the same things, or maybe you noticed something I didn't mention. Let us know of anything new that you see in the comments, and I'll feature some of these comments in my upcoming videos. Also, if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button because it really does help my um, channel to grow and to know that what I'm doing is useful. Now, before we start with the detailed analysis, I just want to give a quick pitch for a new book I'm reading, uh, Tongue Tied, Breaking the Language Barrier to Animal Liberation, and that's by Hen Nguyen. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Because my passion is around language because I think it's the most accessible tool for us to help dismantle speciesism and human superiority. And there's a couple of quotes in this book I found already that I think really help to summarize this point. The first is that language is a double-edged sword. It is one of the most beautiful aspects of human cultural heritage. At the same time, it's a weapon used to discriminate and dominate. I think another quote that helps summarize this quite nicely in the phenomenon around language, for something that's so significant, something that's imbued with so much tradition and history, we give it little thought most of the time. So a lot of my language points today are going to be really about how we can help use our language to liberate our fellow animals and change the way that speciesists and non-vegans think about our fellow animals. With that, let's get into the detailed breakdown of the video, starting with the introductions. I could no longer think about eating something that was once living and breathing. So I think for all of us who embrace the idea of veganism and respecting our fellow animals, uh, whether we're an animal advocate or not, I think it's good to have a, a one-liner ready to go um, in response to if somebody says, you're not one of those vegans, are you? This is basically how we would summarize our position in a short, digestible, one or two sentence point. Now, I quite like how Danny does this because it's animal-centric. The one critique I would offer is that rather than saying something, eating something that was once living and breathing, I would encourage us all to say someone because our fellow animals aren't objects, they're individuals. And for those who may be curious, um, my one-liner would probably go something like, yes, I'm vegan because I think our fellow animals should be respected as the unique individuals who they are, which means not breeding, using, or killing them. Depending on the audience, I may also say murder instead of killing, as I think this is a stronger anti-speciesist claim to be making, as long as I don't think it will distract from the initial discussion. Let's carry on. The idea that we are trying to push our ideas onto others, that stereotype I've experienced the most. Okay, so I think for those of us who have been, um, you know, vegan or an animal advocate for some time, we've definitely heard this. And I think it's important to try to think of a counter to some of these claims. The biggest thing I would be quick to point out is that actually our fellow animals are the ones who are having beliefs forced on them. We're merely inviting fellow humans to the discussion. And regardless of how animal advocates are doing this, the true victims are our fellow animals, not humans. If anyone's having beliefs forced on them, it's our fellow animals. And the whole claim that veganism is being forced down our throats, our fellow animals' bodies are literally being forced down non-vegans' throats. So I think it's important to keep these things in perspective. I feel like a lot of people think vegans are more effeminate. People will question your sexuality oftentimes. Okay, so this is another huge topic, and a lot of these points could be videos on their own, but just to try to quickly respond to it, um, given that 80% of vegans do identify as women, I think there's a lot of truth about the perception of this. 
I also think that in my experience, the self-identified males who are vegan tend to be more in touch with um, empathizing with others and may have a better balance between that femininity and masculinity that's not necessarily defined by the bodies we're born into. But I think before getting into the theoretical side of these things, it's important to analyze why people are making these comments. I think oftentimes it comes from a place of defensiveness, so it's a matter of how we can get around that and perhaps dismantle some of these ideas. First could be asking the question, you know, do you think the strong should murder the vulnerable or protect them? Also another question might ask, you know, do you think the strong should do what everybody else does regardless of the moral implications or have the confidence to stand out for what they think is right? The way we live is in total respect to the animals, and I think there's so much that people do not know about indigenous culture. Okay, so this is going to come up in further detail later on, but I think it's really important for us all to start thinking about what the word respect means to you. To me, genuine respect takes everyone's considerations into interest, not just our own. It's also probably the word that I come back to throughout my animal advocacy rather than compassion or kindness. Because while I think those are great bonuses, I don't think they're necessarily a requirement. However, basic respect is. That's why we're planning to name our new micro sanctuary Respect Animal Sanctuary. All right, well with that, I tried to hit all the main points. Please let me know in the comments anything I've missed. I'm most definitely gonna be breaking this up into multiple videos because I know what the average watch times often are for YouTube videos, and I don't want some of these crucial points to be missed. So do make sure to subscribe, that little orange button somewhere down there at the bottom. Uh, make sure to click that so you can be notified when the other parts are released. Also, thanks a lot for all the comments you leave, the likes, the shares, they all really mean a lot to me. Because I think there's a lot of these concepts that we can use to strengthen our animal advocacy, especially when it comes to language, and we're gonna be able to better do that if we do it together. Thank you for all you do for our fellow animals, and I'll see you in the next video. For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com. Thanks for watching.